heritage. Mona, are you up? Yes, thank you so much. Um, good afternoon uh, from Germany, from Bayreuth. I am, I am very, very happy to be part of this colloquium today. And um, thank you so much for the invitation. It's really a great uh, honor for me um, to, to be speaking um, today. I would like to share my screen if this is possible. I think it is. It is. Can you see my screen now? Beautiful. Maybe you can just nod your... Yes? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I am, um, let me just say that um, a few words about me. I'm um, um, yeah, a PhD candidate at the Bayreuth International Graduate School of African Studies at the University of Bayreuth. I'm writing my dissertation on the work of um, Susanne Wenger in the context of Nigerian modernism or Nigerian modern art. I'm happy that uh, Robin just emphasized on the current and ongoing involvement of new generations um, of artists in the um, in the growth because with my presentation I will go back um, in time and um, look at Susanna Wenger more from an art historical perspective and um, yeah so um, to understand Wenger's role and motivation in the context um, it is also central to understand her concept of art her role as a re-owned international artist and her legacy in the context of Nigerian modernist movements that are um, inextricably um, linked and connected to the sacred groves. So, and I want to start with a, with a quote, and I read it out. Impatient and self-willed emancipation of the individual mind is the criterion of modern men. Thus the shrines in which dwell Orisha, who himself dwells in men, have to be new and original in their concept of the enduringly divine. If not, they are falsely affecting the spiritual flow. Their symbolism must encourage new interpretation, individual spontaneity, and spiritual independence, which modern man needs to experience with his God. And um, I choose this quote to start with because for me it sums up very well the guiding principles and motivations Susanna Wenger used to create her life's work at the Rose. And I look at Wenger and the new sacred art movement, um, as I said already, from an art historical perspective, looking at art historical concepts and um, imagine um, or image scientific theories starting from the image um, or the object and, and then zooming out into the context. But especially in the context of the sculptures and the shrines in the in the groups and to un, um, and to understand Wenger's idea, it becomes clear how inseparably linked artistic and spiritual ideas are in her work. Um, but philosophical, humanistic concepts also come to play here, and that is exactly uh, what yeah, fascinates me uh, personally so much about her as an artist. But this is also the reason why her artistic productions are of uh, such far-reaching um, significance also internationally of course her deep immersion into the Yoruba community and religion especially in Oshogbo where she initiated and implemented new forms of expression as a priestess and artist of the new sacred art movement um, shapes her artistic work and her story personally and artistically I would say is also a, start, uh, a story of finding, of connecting of sharing and of belonging so in the following, I would like to give a short biographical outline um, and how and show why she is also of great importance for the international history of art. And um, I, I will not only focus on um, on the sculptures and the groves, but also give an insight to the variety of her artistic media. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, Susanne Wenger, born 1915 in the Austrian city of Graz, was already a well-established artist and had graduated from the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna in 19. 
1937. And when the beginning of World War II shook the world in 39, artists and scientists were persecuted or severely restricted in their work if they did not conform to national socialist ideology and their aesthetic guidelines. Wenger's work fell under the deformatory term of degenerate art, and since she was banned from painting, she concentrated primarily on small format colored pencil drawings, as you can see on the right. In these, she reflected on her perception of the war during the bombing attacks in Vienna and immersed her dream experiences in luminous, overwhelming depictions of fantastic views. And these works from the series uh, from the series of Traumgesichter, Dream Faces, are considered the first surrealist drawings by a female artist created in Austria under Nazi rule. And this is also a very, very important point, how she influenced also European surrealism and especially Austrian sur surrealism. After the war, Wenger co-founded the, the Art Club in Vienna in 47 and participated in national and international exhibitions. In 49, <coughs> her path led her to Paris, where she felt like an outsider between the established artists and their competition for recognition. The encounter with Uli Bayer in Paris marked a decisive point in her artistic career and in her private life. Bayer had applied for, uh, for a position at the university in Ibano, which was only given to married couples. They learned disillusioned by the experience of the World War, was fascinated by the ideas and images that surrounded the African continent. He went to marry Bayer and went to Nigeria. But arrival and life in Ibada initially turned out to be a disappointment. Her in Wenger's English skills were not that yeah, elaborated. She felt isolated and disagreed with the colonial um, attitude of the predominantly European faculty. And unlike Bayer, she found it difficult to integrate into, into the secluded life in the remote university campus. And I want to um, bring this up because it, it also shaped um, um, her and also uh, Uli Bayer's idea on art um, a lot. So Bayer's position at the extramural department uh, took him to the Lantaro Mental Home in Abeokuta in 51, a psychiatric institution where he and Susanne Wenger offered weekly painting courses for the patients. And the works were exhibited at the University Library in Ibadan in 52 under the title Psychotic Art. And this project reflected Wenger's and Bayer's interest in the discourse around the concept of art brew or outsider art, um, coined later by the French artist, or not later, by the French artist uh, Jean Dubuffet. The concept meant art beyond established forms and trends in an anti-academic context, um, represented primarily uh, in the art of children and amateurs or neurodiverse artists, but also non-Western societies, supposed social and economic outsiders. While Art Brühl was considered a critique of the artistic and political establishment in post-war Europe in post-independent African countries, the concept was directed against the colonial systems and their violent suppressions of creativity and artistic self-awareness. So I'm mentioning this here now because it really um, gives a lot of hints on her, as I said, concept of art and maybe um, her kind um, motives later in her in her in her in her life and artistic creation. So already in '53, during their stay in the city of Ede, and after Wenger had recovered from severe tuberculosis, she met the Ajagemu, priest of Obatala, who became a mentor and important spiritual reference point for her. And um, the intimate relationship with him led to initiation as an Obatala priestess. Expressions of this um, overwhelming encounter with the Ajagemu were serious 
of large-scale expressionistic oil paintings that helped Wenger visualize and process these intense experiences. And they contrasted with the more or less controlled wax batiks, which um, apart from some region, um, regional textile patterns that filled the surfaces of the graphic artics, did not use so much um, Yoruba traditional or formal language, but depicted exclusively um, Yoruba mythologies, um, for example, as we see in this, um, in this image. Um, the depiction of the Orishas of the Yoruba Pantheon is also found in her screen prints and Lino cuts, which were made at the same time as the Batiks. And um, there are these, um, as Wolfgang Deng puts it, characteristically expressive overlays of the figures, and I think this is also something very characteristic we also find in the sculptures and um, uh, renovated shrine in the Grove. And they are also an expression of her formal language, which is influenced also by her European art experience. And her and Bayer's move to Oshogo in 58 marked another change for Wenger, who at the same time had to cope with the Ajagenu's death, and while learning to die, had been a, ga uh, a gate a gateway, um, as Ms. Nakone puts it, into Yoruba society for Wenger, she aspired uh, to be fully integrated. And um, Benga's desire to be part of a community, and I think um, especially the the last um, quote uh, or the last sentence um, we see here, where she is uh, saying, "I need to get involved in a different way. I need to go deep. I need to go uh, lost. I need to get lost in it." Um, um, yeah, um, describes it very much um, how. Um, yeah, she wanted to, uh, she had this desire to be part of a community and to be fully immersed. Um, um, and when she received a request from the priestess of the goddess Oshun in Oshogbo to restore the shrines in the sacred groves, she took over the order. And um, yeah, here we can see some works, uh, of course you all <laughs> know them best. And it was there that um, Susanna Wenger finally found her place in the center of the Yoruba community. She founded the New Sacred Art Movement, a title that not only expressed her aspiration for a new, innovative, and thus formal, modern formal language to serve the deities, but also designation for the group of um, artists she worked with. Um, young um, artists from Ushpurbo who dedicated themselves um, to rehabilitating the sacred groves of Oshogbo and implementing their own creative artistic expressions there. And Benga recognized their artistic potential and supported them in their projects in the groves from then on. And shortly after, some sculptures and um, Adebisi Akronji, Benga's, Benga's one of her closest allies in the work at the groves, and Saka followed um, as did woodcarvers Wu Raimu Badamusi, Kasali Akube, and Rabiu Abusu. And all of these artists had been craftsmen such as carpenters, masons, or blacksmiths before they met, and they assisted uh, Susanna Wenger in the remodeling, restoration, and construction of the shrines in the sacred groves. Here you can see some pictures of them. Important independent artists who also were paid for their works on the shrines by Wenger herself and the artist material her works in Europe and in Nigeria. The experiments, is, if you want to say, if you want to put it like that, um, at the sacred groups in Oshogbo grew out of beliefs about the role of art in a society. So both believed um, that it will be Bayer did um, in Oshogbo as well with the um, um, Oshogbo um, workshops with his um, second wife Georgina Bayer. So both believed that it was central for art to leave the spaces of a museum and become integrated into everyday life and thus also accessible. Um, their agenda further related to a desired um, unification of art and culture to of capitalism and capitalism and to 
contrary to the widespread view, especially um, in Europe and um, in the in the countries of the colonizers, um, that African art was on the verge of collapse. However, the works of the museum so the traditional works of Yoruba artists, which were known before, and they also differed in their choice of materials. So, um, for example, for the sculptures in the shrine, Wenger and her colleagues mainly used cement to construct the monumental figures in the flowing, dynamic, and spontaneous forms. And the difference is that the new um, sacred art group announced with their decisions for new techniques um, and forms were also very problematic for that uh, time, uh, because it was the time um, after Nigeria's independence from colonial rule be buried and accordingly a return to, um, to um, forms and aesthetics um, were not meeting the, um, the needs of the time, so to say, was rejected. And the only option was to find this expression, new images that reflected the still undetermined future of Nigerian society, but also not, of course, rejecting tradition, but to, to use it and to create something new. And um, we heard that in the very, um, very first quote where I started it. And according to Benham, the restored shrines and the sacred groups, as well as the newly created sculptures um, in Oshogbo, should claim to be new, innovative, and thus um, more than as I quoted her on the very first slide. Thank Otherwise, so they would not serve the gods. Thank you, thank you. At, the same, at the same time, writers like Uli Bayer criticized that the colonial system denied artists access to progressive contemporary art developments, um, for example, such as those found in, um, in Europe, like Expressionism and Surrealism. But there were artists, of course, as we can see in Rosholbo, who worked in a um, Surrealist, um, who were working with Surrealist um, ideas. Um, Wenger and Bayer shared an understanding of art as a self-referential process of, the, of an autonomous mind and which is itself, uh, or which expresses itself artistically in free compositions, as we have, I think the group, the sculptures in the groups are a good example of that. Thank and they were you. found in the variety of media that um, they are created culminating in the sculptures in the same group. And it's also important to say that um, Benga saw her role within the new sacred art movement as part of a collective that was not only human, but also included the divine dimensions, the Orishas. And moreover, Benga understood her artistic activities within the movement as a catalyst for her own creative energy. And these are all, when I say she understands herself, these are, it's not that I'm making this up, but these are all quotes from um, the Timeless Mind of the Sacred, a publication um, she published in 1977. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Then I lived in 